Well, the commandments God gave to the children of Israel were not just about how to worship Him, but how to live life, how to engage with the people and world around them. The laws covered all of religious and civil life, agriculture, business, family relationships, and on and on. As a result, Judaism developed a great value for the world around it and believes obedience to these laws sanctifies the world. They have a strong belief in what Hebrew is tikkun olam, to repair the world. So welcome to this week's Shabbat Shalom devotional when I seek to share a little inspiration and bring a little peace to the close of your very busy week. This week's Torah portion is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 10 through 25, verse 19. It is called Ki Titse, when you go out, meaning when you go out to battle. So this week, we're still in the midst of the stipulation section of Deuteronomy. As I explained last week, uh, these are the commandments of God as part of His covenant, His agreement with His people. So this week, we open up with the section about the principles of warfare. So I find it very interesting, a couple of verses I saw, it says, you know, when you go to war, do not fear because the Lord your God is with you and He will give you victory. But if you do fear, He said, go home so you don't influence the rest of those going to war. Isn't that interesting? Kind of like the spies going out, how that that influence of the 10. So He's saying, if you have fear, just go home. Don't influence the fighting army. <laughs> then um, they were to, when the army approached the enemy, they were first to offer peace. Isn't that great? And then it says, but if they don't reciprocate with peace and instead attack, then you're to wipe them out. It's that simple. You know, war is an ugly thing. And I know a lot of people struggle with the existence of war and bloodshed in the Bible. War is ugly. I don't care if it was then or if it's now. But this seems pretty fair to me that they are supposed to go and offer peace first. Then after this, we read laws about if you take female captives in war. And then we get into another section about inheritance laws, uh, all kinds of laws, even laws about who is allowed into the congregation of Israel to be a part of the people. And it says the Ammonites and the Moabites, no way, they are not to be let in because they mistreated the Israelites. But then what is so interesting, it says, but you shall not abhor an Egyptian because you were an alien in his land. Now, very interesting here. It doesn't say this. I'm just conjecturing, but it seems that God understood it was the Pharaoh of Egypt that enslaved the Israelites. It wasn't the people of Egypt. There were actually some very good people in Egypt, like the midwives that tried to defy Pharaoh. Even Pharaoh's own daughter defied Pharaoh. So there were some really good spots in the Egyptian story. And it seems that the people of Egypt really had been kind to the Hebrew slaves and to the Israelites when they first came in. And therefore, God is saying, do not abhor the Egyptian. You were once an alien in their land, so welcome them and take care of them in yours. I love it. Then there's a very interesting part about cleanliness in the camp and about how you should have your outhouse outside of the camp and how to clean up and how to deal with that refuse. And then it says, because the camp should be clean. And why? Well, in chapter 23, verse 14, it says, let me read it. For the Lord your God walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and give your enemies over to you. Therefore, your camp shall be holy, that he may see no unclean thing among you, and turn away from you. So for all of you clean freaks in the audience like me, that we really like a clean house, so does the Lord. You can use that verse to back you up when anybody 
tries to argue with you. Our God likes a clean camp. Okay, moving on. The law is not just about how to worship God and walk with Him. It is a civil law, and it's about all areas of life, how to engage the world and the peoples around them. It was about treating others right, as well as treating each others right. And in so doing, you were sanctifying the world around you. So Judaism is very much about sanctifying the world. And they have developed a Hebrew term, which is in their daily prayers, tikkun olam, and it means repairing the world. You know, I think as tedious as some of these laws become as we're trying to read through a whole book, there is so much that we can learn from them, from the Jewish people and from the book of Deuteronomy. And with that, I wish you Shabbat Shalom.